Well, hey, my name's Jay. Welcome to my booth. Uh, live directed recording sessions were one of those things that when I was starting out in voiceover stressed the heck out of me. But after doing one or two, yeah, I found that they're really not all that terrifying at all. So here are some ways that you can set yourself up for a successful, low stress experience for both you and the client you're recording for. First things first, when you're submitting your auditions or proposals for a job, more often than not, it'll be listed if they want a live directed session. In which case, you know what you're getting into. Now, if a live directed session isn't requested up front, oftentimes I'll offer that in my proposal. Now, it's totally up to you whether or not you want to offer this up front or if you'd rather wait for your clients to request it themselves. I just think that showcasing it shows a nice readiness and I think is a good selling point. And if the client is thinking about it, you've answered their question before they've even asked it or hired you. And I think that's just good customer service. So here's how I handle that in my uh, submissions, auditions, proposals. I just say I'm available for live direction upon request uh, via a number of video and audio chat platforms, Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, as well as Source Connect. And if one of those that you prefer is not listed, let me know and I'll do what I can. So next, you book the job. Congrats. And they've requested a live directed session. So after you've exchanged pleasantries, the uh, glad to be working with you, etc., cetera, uh, ask them how they'd like to connect for the recording session via Google, Skype, etc. Now, if they'd like to connect from Source Connect, I'll cover that in another video because it's a little bit different than those others. Um, now, if they've requested the standard video chat, plat video chat platforms, in my experience, they'll usually send you a link. But in the rare instance that they don't provide a link for you, uh, well, then just pick the platform that you're most comfortable with and send them a link. Now, quick note, if you do end up sending them a link, just remember that some video services have a time limit for these free or unpaid versions of their softwares. Zoom is 40 minutes, Google Meet is one hour, and Skype is 24 hours. Um, so don't worry about paying for a premium to get rid of the time limit. Just be aware of those limitations going in. Now, if that time limit stresses you out a little bit, uh, and it would make you feel better to remove that factor. Just chalk it up to a business expense from the money you've booked from this gig to pay for that premium subscription and you're on your way. So once you know which service they'd like to use, make sure you have it downloaded on your computer and do not wait until the day of the session to download it. Do it right now, right now. And after you've got it downloaded, I'd recommend doing a test run. So set everything up the way you would for a session, mic placement, your interface recording software, your DAW open and recording, and the video chat open and running. If you're setting this up for the first time, ask a friend, a spouse, a colleague, ask someone if they can help you with this test run. And all of this is to make sure that you're not gonna have to troubleshoot anything on the day of your recording session, which can be uh, stressful to say the least. And once the test call is completed, ask your helper if they're hearing any echoes, any weird sound artifacts, and then hit record on your audio software and see if anything changes. Uh, double check with your helper, see if anything weird is happening at this point, and then after the call is over, Double check your audio that you've recorded in your software to make sure that it all sounds all right and it's not picking up anything weird. So to set your audio up in Zoom, it looks a little something like this. Pull Zoom open, there's this little icon here. Give that a click, go down to audio, and you can see as I speak, this comes up and you can see that my meter's moving up and down. That's because I've selected Universal Audio Thunderbolt, which is my audio interface here. So whatever interface or microphone you have plugged in, just click on that. And then the same deal here. I want the audio to come out of my headphones, which are plugged into my interface. Click on that. Boom. Then for the test call, I'll just open this up. Join with computer audio. Click on this just to make sure that everything's working properly. Boom, boom. And I can click test speaker and microphone and it'll play a tone and let you uh, 
say some words and hear them back to make sure you're not getting any echo. So click on that and run through it and you can troubleshoot from there. Skype is very similar to Zoom in the way you set it up. Now it'll prompt you to set up your audio uh, correctly when you first download Skype, but if anything's changed or if you're having issues, you can fix that by going here, settings, go down to audio and video, scroll down, microphone, you can choose default device or directly to your interface. I'll choose my interface. Same deal here, I'll go to my interface and then you can test everything right here. And then you should be good to go on Skype. Now, Google Meet is just slightly different from Zoom or Skype in that it's browser-based, meaning you'll just pull open your browser, whether that's Safari, Google Chrome, Firefox, whatever it may be, and go to googlemeet.com or meet.google.com. Once you hit this page, go up to this little wheel here, give it a click, it'll ask for permission to use your microphone. Allow. Pop up. And this is case in point why you should always, always, always do a test run before your live recording sessions. In this instance, I had started recording in my DAW, my audio recording software, before I started fiddling around with all of these settings, which then resulted in the sound you hear now which is muted and distorted because it just got messed up. So that's a reason why you should always do the tests. And now I'll just walk through everything that I'm doing here uh, in a post-production voiceover way. So here in the settings tab, it's the same story as the others. Just make sure that your input and output are where you want them. And using that little squiggly line, you can see that the microphone's working okay. And... Uh, here it only has system default device which you can double check is correct by going down to your system preferences sound and output and just make sure that your audio interface is clicked there and you should be good to go and then to test this recording uh, we can set up a new meeting by starting an instant meeting again click allow and it'll pop open into this meeting here uh, there's the link that you can send to your helper friend to make sure that the audio sounds good on their end. And for now, we'll just click out of that. But you can see that my input is working because the circle around my face bounces. And there's that same little squiggly line up in the corner there. We can also go down to this settings tab to double check everything here or just do this in the first place. And it's all looking squared away. Troubleshooting done. You're good to go. Now, the day of the session... I usually show up about 30 minutes before go time and I'll make sure that everything's set up and I'll do another quick little test run. No helper call here, nothing crazy. I'm just making sure that uh, the internet's working okay, the software doesn't need to be updated, uh, anything like that. And pro tip, if you can hard line your computer to the internet with an ethernet cable, this offers a more stable and faster connection than Wi-Fi, which is a good idea for live sessions. Now, for the session itself, I'll usually join the call about five to three minutes beforehand. And no need to be earlier um, with the age of work from home stuff. Uh, but once you join the call, um, well, quick note, you do not need to have your video enabled for this. After all, it is voiceover. So you're just a voice. If you'd like to, go ahead, uh, but for me, I find it adds just a small layer of self-consciousness, not to mention my booth can get pretty steamy, and I usually end up sweating during longer recording sessions. Uh, then, when the session starts off, say hi, uh, check in, how's your day going, how has your week been so far, let everybody settle in, see how they'd like to run things, and now every session's a little bit different, but... Um, most folks in my experience are just super easy, excited to be working with you, and usually there's an element of play and fun in the room room because they want to get a fun take from you. Now, just be mindful of the energy everyone's putting out and uh, adjust accordingly, but more often than not, a uh, business casual approach is a good way to go. And once they're ready to record, hit record.
Now, there are a couple ways to go about recording this live session. Uh, most often, you'll just hit record at the beginning of the session, let it run the whole time, and stop it at the end, and send them a high-quality, long audio file. Now, some may prefer the audio to be broken up into takes or individual sections, and if that's the case, then, and if that's, of course, something that you're comfortable with, perhaps more importantly, that's great. And you can either do this on the fly, hitting stop and go, record and stop uh, as you go, which is my preference. Or you can let the recording go for the whole session and edit everything together afterwards in individual files. And the way I approach this is by asking, hey, what's the best way for you to receive the files once we're done? Individual takes, one large audio file, just one straight record. One thing that's super duper important, and if you're going to take anything away from this video, it should be this. You are the one in control of the session. If at any point you need to take a break, take a sip or refill your water, stand up to stretch, it's totally fine for you to ask for that. Now, provided you aren't abusing your client's time in doing so, the client's not going to think that you're unprofessional, lame, that you're costing them money. In fact, it's quite the opposite. By asking for what you need, it makes you seem like you know what you're doing. And it makes you seem professional. You know what you need, and you know what's going to get them the best performance from you that's possible. And this also extends to knowing your personal limits, your physical limits, your mental limits, and your emotional limits. Uh, for example, if you're doing an animated show or whatever, and your voice is getting tired, because the clients asked you to scream the same line over and over and over again, it is well within your rights and it is more importantly within your best interest to simply say, hey, I think my voice can only do one or two more of these. It's getting pretty tired. Or even, I don't think I can scream like that anymore. My voice is uh, uh, getting pretty tired. And by the same token, if you're asked to do something that you're just not comfortable doing or voicing, you are totally within your rights to say, I'd rather not. Uh, even in the extreme case that this costs you the job, uh, it's not really costing you the job. It's okay to say no thank you and walk away even at this stage. Take it from me, it's, it's not worth uh, feeling icky about it later. Now, the session is over you've stopped recording now just quickly before you sign off with the client if they didn't tell you where they want the files uploaded how to deliver them ask if they didn't tell you what kind of file specifications they'd like ask um and if they'd like you to do any post processing if again that's something you're comfortable with just quickly clarify that and sign off and that's it you're ready for a live directed session. I hope that was uh, quick, easy, comfortable for you. And again, if they ask for a Source Connect session, I'll cover that in another video uh, because it's slightly different. If you have any questions about this or anything else, as always, drop me a line below or reach out on my website. I'm happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, toodles.